Good evening and welcome. You're watching Breaking Views with me, Sanket Upadhyay. The show where we get you all the views so that you get the complete picture. And this is one picture which Bengaluru perhaps did not want to see. That's the latest. These are latest pictures coming in. Let's perhaps go full frame to show you that at a time when Bengaluru, which was reeling under that very very disastrous look of certain sections completely inundated. One hoped that perhaps the rain will stop and the water will recede. But unfortunately, what has happened is that heavy rainfall has begun again for a third consecutive day in Bengaluru. Now, this will mean the swelling up of lakes. This will mean water filling up once again in the low-lying areas and also the nearby areas, which is exactly what happened. We must also point out over here that the purpose of this broadcast it no, is not to send a sense of panic. It's not like the whole city is inundated, that everyone in the city is swimming, or that everyone is stuck. No, these are pockets. But the point is that these are massive pockets where the population density is very high, low-lying areas, right next to the lake, right next to uh, river bodies. Water bodies, beg your pardon. And when rainfall happens, this is creating a problem again. As we discuss and have a typical templated discussion like we always do on natural calamity versus man-made, I would like you to look at this image on your screen. This is Bengaluru, the various water bodies. Let's quickly go full frame on that animation. As you can see, what has happened is that over the years, from the 80s onwards, in Bengaluru, around the various water bodies, from the 90s in fact, you see how the construction is taking place, eating into these water bodies. The most infamous Belandur Lake, if you remember, uh, this is the lake where uh, in, in a matter of 10-15 minutes, uh, frothy substance starts building up and then reduces. It is such areas, such lakes, such water bodies that have no breathing space left in the city because of the rampant construction activity over the past two to three decades. Not, not one government but successive governments have failed in their urban planning for Bengaluru. Which is why this is a story of three Bs, Barish which is rain, buildings and Bengaluru. When you will construct non-stop on water bodies, when you will carry out rampant construction, when politicians will become builders and they will construct whatever they want to, they will change whatever rule they want to. This is not a matter of one government. Very conveniently, the Congress will now say, look what BJP is doing. You are also in power. JDS was also in power. It is a known fact. Ask anyone in Bengaluru. Every top politician and their cronies have turned builders, they have turned property mafias. So at a time that this has happened, Barish buildings in Bengaluru, when we see pictures of CEOs and students having to take tractors to come out of their own luxurious houses, when you see people being evacuated from low-lying areas, is this a city, a blunder built on greed? That's the question that we are asking. Let's quickly put out that, uh, that graphic one more time where you can see how the water bodies have shrunk and how that has happened over the past three decades. How slowly these, this construction activity has eaten into what was supposed to be those water bodies. So when it rains like it is raining right now, those water bodies would have taken the water away. You see with each successive year, this is uh, a video courtesy Mr. Raj Bhagat, it's a time lapse, where you can see up till 2016-17 how the lake is completely reduced and the area which is supposed to be the lake is now a fully constructed township. From big builders to small builders, everyone's there. And this has all happened from the late 80s onwards, as you can see in these pictures. 
this massive urban expansion built on greed is the reason why Bengaluru is facing this crisis right now. Let's hope the water recedes, but let's also hope that someone somewhere is listening, that we created this problem. It is this greed, this nexus which is responsible for this problem. I would like to welcome all our guests this evening. Ashwini Nachappa is a former international athlete and Arjuna Awardee, proud Bangalorean. Harish Bijur, brand guru and founder of Har Harish Bijur Consults. Uh, Raj Bhagat, uh, thank you very much Raj. It is basically your video that we are showing right now. The, the animation which shows how things uh, reached where they are. Where even these, these luxurious houses that we saw just a short while ago, where uh, you've got uh, almost the, the ground floor flooded completely. Uh, thank you very much. Vijay N. Menon is the president of the Citizens Action Forum in Bengaluru and Choko Valiappa, CEO of VT Technologies. Thank you very much. We on purpose decided not to call politicians because they hijack the debate, they will blame one another, they will never blame themselves. Raj Bhagat, I want to begin with you first. Can you explain the animation? What does this animation prove? Right. Um, so actually, what what we are seeing right now um, uh, in these animations is that uh, you know Bangalore is actually uh, you know topographically sitting at 900 meters above sea level, right? Like it's a, it's a hill station, basically. So whenever rain falls on it, uh, they create valleys uh, where they you know where they erode the soil and they have created valleys where, along which the water uh, used to move. Um, you know, in the past, it has been uh, all these lakes were actually, uh, you know, constructed for irrigation purpose on these valleys. It is all these valleys that, uh, you know, act as conduits, which transport water from one place to the other. When there is extreme amount of rainfall, these are the places where it's supposed to flow. Unfortunately, what we are seeing is that, uh, uh, you know, Bangalore, of course, had one of the uh, fastest growth rates and uh, it began expanding uh, really fast. And uh, uh, what it created a market for these lands, right? Like, so there was a, a real estate value behind these lands and the topography and this, uh, uh, you know, conduits were completely forgotten. So what we are seeing right now is that uh, when construction started over these valleys, water, you know, it, it, it just wants to move, but uh, we have just blocked its path. Uh, our roads, our uh, buildings all act as barriers to uh, the movement of water and uh, it is just stagnating behind it. So this is what we are seeing. I mean, uh, though there are cases where, uh, you know, which is happening because of uh, uh, different reasons, that, that those are like minor, but all the major cases that you're seeing, at least in the videos and, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, the most extreme cases are all happening along these valleys. Every single incident, whether it is the Rainbow Drive, whether it is the uh, Outer Ring Road, the uh, RMZ Eco Space or Manyata Tech Park that floods almost every year, everything is happening along these uh, places. So this is the problem and we have failed to address these in the master plan and uh, uh, and we are uh, still in not... In simple terms, to explain to our viewers, the point is what was supposed to be the space for water to exist. Whenever there is any flood water, uh, these were flood plains. This is where that excessive water would have gone or this is the stream that the water would have taken to go away. We have obstructed all of that with buildings and roads and now we are sitting and wondering that there is water in my house. So that is in a nutshell what has happened in Bengaluru. Ashwini Nachappa, uh, you know, when we see images of CEOs uh, having to leave their houses in tractors, uh, packing their bags and moving to a safe place, and I'm repeating once again, the whole of Bengaluru is not inundated. It's just some pockets. So the idea is not to spread alarm or spread false news, but the point is, what has happened should also not happen. This is not how these cities are supposed to be developed. You're supposed to know that water will gather over here. But you know, the larger point is, don't you think, Ashwini Nachapa, that the reason why this, in, this urbanization happened was to cater to, you know, the tag of Bengaluru being the IT capital, IT hub, to, to service the IT sector. That very same sector will leave because of these reasons. That's true. Uh, and uh, if you just go back in hindsight, if you really, you know, if, thinking in 1994, when Bangalore City really opened up, that's when the troubles started. And we are seeing the result of it now. 
it opened up to a city where we wanted to expand and expand and expand and the development took place at such a fast pace without the infrastructure we really lacked planning and the result today what you see is exactly what uh, your guest said because this is exactly what has happened you've extended the city without planning uh, we've had uh, you know the nexus between uh, the politicians and the uh, as you rightly said all politicians have become builders and successive governments have really failed bangaloreans we are the largest you know the fastest growing city as i said but we've really not taken care of its citizens and we've just kept quiet as we speak it's pouring i'm right now in poog but i just spoke to my mom a little while ago and it is pouring luckily if you see the central bangalore city is kind of safe because that's where you know that existed and when we expanded we really didn't do much about it it was just a money making machine that has resulted into what we see today unfortunately and it's sad that bangalore is facing this crisis but it is only man made mr mr vijay and menon i want to come to you now as the president of citizens action forum uh you know i think it's futile to ask you whether you have taken this up with governments or not because you must have but the point is that from here on what do you do or we are just waiting for one tragedy and another to keep on happening it's a long road ahead it's a fairly fairly long road ahead but you need to put shoulder to the wheel uh you need to be optimistic uh you need to redesign bangalore and you need to have political will uh and a, a bureaucracy that works uh to look to look into it there are solutions uh there definitely uh, is no reason to uh you know uh, ring a death bell uh to bangalore but um, you know i always talk about uh, the trinity you talked about a trinity of barish etc i talk of a trinity of incompetence irresponsibility and corruption mm. uh now that's a very deadly combination now uh, it is up to the citizens to be able to break that uh, you know the stranglehold that we have technically all of this are design issues design uh, can deliver us out of this uh, mess uh, it is not easy and it's not a short term thing as long as we don't look for short term uh, short term uh, measures we have solutions exactly uh mr valiappa I want to ask yeah. you this question. You know, there was uh, there was this grand idea, and I'll ask this to Mr. Harish Bijur also. The grand concept of Bengaluru, the IT capital, the IT hub, uh, the advent of jobs, many multinational companies coming here. What uh, comes to your mind when you see images of these multinational company employees, CEOs? having to sit in tractors with all due respect to those tractors because they are saving people today uh, having to sit in tractors and having to go to work or leave their house or doing all sorts of things what does this say of a city which cannot sustain the very dream that was sold yeah in in many ways uh, i think it's a picture of uh, bangalore crying in a way i mean the rains are literally weeping uh, from that perspective it, it is a sad state uh, it, uh, but it uh, let's look at it uh, also in 75 years we've never had so much rain in september so uh, i mean it is an exceptional uh, case but what's uh, befitting is that like you know for much uh, like this this question was asked to the chief minister uh, uh, a, a, a during uh, the legislative assembly and uh, he did mention that there were 382 acres of land that was in uh, drains that were encroached in bangalore See. and uh, that is what he had come out and said and then 1900 cases have been filed so hope the courts perhaps would set up a fast track because the i mean these are people at stake it's not just the people who build the houses but the other people uh, the society is at stake so maybe this 1900 cases should be heard in fast track or something if it needs to be demolished it needs to get demolished and uh, Uh, there are about 842 kilometers of drains around bangalore and i think half of them have been addressed the other half have not been addressed hmm. and uh, like was said earlier like you know every major city in the world is next to an ocean or a river and bangalore is a city of lakes 
Uh, that's how traditionally it is. And, and we need to create, uh, there are drains which take uh, the, the water to these lakes. But the lakes are overflowing and the, the, they are overflowing back into these drains. So there needs to be an exit path into these, into these drains. Uh, I mean, that's what is needed. I mean, from an IT uh, standpoint, Bangalore is still the, the hub spot of talent around the world. Uh, Bangalore is a, still a technological superpower. So, uh, and, I, and I hope that that will continue as well. But uh, what we need to do is to take fast action. And then from a technology standpoint, like uh, as an IT person, we need to uh, uh, create a blockchain of corruption. Right. So the twin towers that we saw in Delhi being demolished is great. But what about the people who have gone forward? So those are things that we need to start taking. If people have allowed a sanction uh, in a drain and who is the officer which took that? Uh, so unless we take action on that, because wow, we, what a lovely suggestion. Speak, speaking about it's it, a fantastic but solution. That we forget it. So. I mean, trust a, a person from the IT city to come with an innovative uh, uh, tech-related uh, solution. That's a very, very interesting point. In fact, uh, shouldn't uh, IT experts start working on something like this with the cooperation? I'm, I'm going to ask this. We're going to ask this question of the government also. But Harish Bijur, I want to bring you in here. You see, uh, I would say that Mr. Valiapa has been quite brave in being able to say what uh, many CEOs are not able to say. For instance, we know for a fact that a lot of CEOs have their house completely inundated, but they say that don't use the pictures, you know, we may get into trouble with the government. So a responsible citizen, a responsible CEO will lead to accountability. But when you give in, then this is what you get. Yeah, uh, sure, Sanket. Uh, and I, I'm not in Bengaluru at the moment. I fled after the after the rains, but I was just calling Bangalore back, and oh. I was told it's raining once again. Yeah. I am in a dry Ahmedabad at the moment, mm. dry in more ways than one. Bengaluru is wet, wet, wet. And if you really look at it, uh, it's all about water. And I think you know the beauty of water is uh, water has a memory, and it will go where it always used to go. So a city of lakes, if you vanish the lakes, if you build on the lakes. If you build by the lakes where you mustn't build, water will still go where it used to go. And that's exactly what's happening. The second beauty of uh, water is the fact that it, it knows no income group. It will go into the high income group home, uh, villas which cost about 30 crores today. And it will equally go into homes which cost about a lakh and a half. And that is the disaster. That is the secular disaster that's happening in Bengaluru. Mm. If you ask me what must we do, I think the city is a magnet city today. Uh, it has uh, brought in people from everywhere. It has brought in businesses from everywhere. It has brought in prosperity. I think that must prevail. The multicultural format of Bengaluru must prevail. But I think it's time to demagnetize the city. We need to really say that Bengaluru is too big for its old boots. Its old boots just don't fit anymore. By the way, we've vanquished some of its boots. The number of Rajaka Kalways which have been vanquished are humongous in number. Mm. So we have taken the boots, we have removed the boots, we have thrown out the boots, and the boots don't fit new Bengaluru. So I think, you know, it's really all about Barish, Bengaluru, Blunder, and its old boots. Just doesn't fit. Mm. We need to take actions to demagnetize the No, city. but then what action will you take? Because this is very sy systematic and institutionalized. For instance, I will tell you, I had the... Uh, how do I say this, misfortune of visiting the Belandur Lake, that place, that spot where there is a bridge, uh, where every 15 minutes the froth starts rising. Trust me, I couldn't stand there for more than 20 minutes. My eyes started to hurt. It's so terrible. And over there, you have housing complexes. As you said, these are some expensive flats running into crores and crores of rupees. So it's not some illegal corruption, you know, illegal construction that is happening. Big builders, institutionalized corruption, where all of them have been allowed to come. Mr. Vijay, uh, Mr. Vijayan? Yeah, you're speaking of Belindur. Uh, that's interesting. And you're asking for solutions. Uh, the problem is when solutions present, the, uh, present themselves. And uh, one of your guest speakers were talking about fast-tracked courts. We are now in a situation and an administration gone rogue. We have fought for five, 10 years to stop a development on 100 acres of the Belandur 
Lake, uh, which has destroyed the Belanduru Lake, and up to Supreme Court three years ago, it was to restore the wetland on money which is takeable at a hundred crores level from the developers. For three years, they have not touched that ground. Mm. And if today they had even done half of that work, I am sure the uh, problem would not have been solved fully, but the Belandur area problem would have definitely been mitigated. So we have a situation here where even at the level, we have an administration, let me put it that way, which has sat on its whatever haunches for the last three years on a Supreme Court order. Mm. So, you know, the problem is quite deep. So, uh, and it's really uh, people like you who would need to highlight it. because you know, we which, have is why, which is why for this discussion, we chose not to invite the politicians. It was very convenient for a JDS and the Congress to today Precisely. accuse a uh, uh, Bomai government and say that, you know, they are responsible. What have they done? Sure, they are in power. But this is not, all of this has not been built in a day. This is successive governments, and as Raj Bhagat's map shows, let's quickly put that on air again. Uh, Raj Bhagat, many, many years of systematic, institutionalized degradation of a city. Um, I just want to say that, I mean, yeah. um, uh, I mean, first is if we want to talk about uh, floods and the solutions behind it, mm. we have to understand it a little bit more. Right, like so, I try to talk about that value system. Uh, we are uh, always getting uh, distracted during floods about lakes. Uh, right, like lakes are water retaining structures. They are not, you know, inundation structures. They are not built for inundation purposes. They they can act as a buffer at sometimes when we are not having enough uh, flow paths. But what we have to look at the are the flow paths and the size of the drains that we have, etc. A good amount of these are not necessarily illegal. These are not encroachments, right? Like, so these are just poor planning or lack of planning. We didn't identify that these should be sensitive and it was private land. Many of that were constructed as uh, such. Now, uh, in certain cases where there was, uh, you know, there was not uh, permission, it, it would have been granted later, you know, uh, but that is actually a very, a socially biased situation. What we are talking about always is that illegal encroachments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We talk about it every time. It is always the elite that talk about it. See, the illegal encroachments. The difference between uh, uh, construction in a valley, whether it is illegal or illegal, is not a matter of uh, ecological significance. It is always about whether one is having a money to, you know, get it legalized or not. That is the situation right mm. now. So, which means that uh, the moment we are fo focusing on illegal encroachments, we always talk about, I mean, immediately some uh, poor people's houses will be the ones that would be demolished. It is I not going to be the that. ones that are going to be significant. And that's exactly here. the point on Belandur that I was making. That yeah, I saw I mean, some high-rise buildings there. Yeah, Why exactly. This, so, yeah. so, we need to, I mean, uh, and also we have to talk about, I mean, how many houses are we, are we going to demolish or something like that. I mean, we should come out of that mentality and trying to understand the flood situation right now and trying to re-engineer our city. That is what we should be focusing rather than the encroachments or, uh, you know, figuring out who is uh, uh, the criminal behind it, etc., etc. I mean, everyone in Bangalore would be uh, bypassing some kind of uh, building regulation right now, right? Like, I sure. mean, every house uh, is, uh, you know, that way. So okay. we can't go behind everything. We have to target certain solutions from, I mean, we, we need to have a roadmap for both short term. No, tech solution is a very, well very interesting suggestion. I, I believe uh, if the government is very serious and if the government does not want its citizens traveling in tractors, maybe next year also, then they should look at uh, innovative uh, tech related solutions to be able to find, you know, uh, who was responsible for commissioning what and also with a sense of responsibility. Ashwini Nachappa, what would you say uh, about your beloved city that needs to be done from here on? I think we can all keep complaining about things, but really, do we have the political will to go the distance absolutely to solve and resolve? Because there are, uh, you know, I am sure as Raj Bhagat is rightly pointing out, let's look at solutions. The city is, uh, you know, s certain pockets of the city are in real, real bad shape. And we are having this downpour for the third consecutive days. 
what is the solution what can we do about it there are people willing to come up with solutions but is the government willing to listen and i think that's what we need to ask why is the government not looking at solutions when there are many heads many many uh, you know professionals who are giving uh, this it thing was a great uh, suggestion but are people willing who are you know people who are ruling this uh, city who are yeah. actually managing all these affairs willing to listen and taking that call i think that is what matters right now can we get them to take that call absolutely all right ashwini nachappa harish bijur uh... Raj Bhagat, Vijayan Menon, as well as Mr. Valiappa, thank you very much for joining us. Let's hope the rain stops and the crisis that Bengaluru is in also ends. Good night.